Hey friend, welcome back to another Sage Audio video. Today we're going to be talking about loudness. In particular, we'll be discussing how loud your mix should be before sending it off to mastering. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of people telling you to make your mixes louder than they need to be. Hopefully we can set the record straight and you'll learn some things about mixing, about mastering, and something called normalization and how all these things tie in to creating a great sounding mix and master. So let's get into it. But before we do, if you find this video to be helpful, please like and share it with your friends and colleagues. Just as important, if you could subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Lastly, if you're an artist or an engineer or both, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free sample. So, historically speaking, mastering has always been a way for records to compete with one another sonically. It started when record labels discovered that if they boosted 3 kHz on their records, it would sound better on the radio, and in turn, people would enjoy these records more. Now, a lot has changed since then, but what remains the same is that idea. The idea that there is a way to make a record sound better and in turn make it more enjoyable for the listener. With this in mind, a lot of mixing and mastering engineers have used loudness as a way to accomplish this. However, if you've ever listened to a really loud record, you know that it gets tiring. No one wants to listen to something that's blaring loud with no dynamics, with no break or rest. It truly makes for an unpleasant listening experience. Now, what's even more concerning, the platforms we're uploading these songs to, be it Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and SoundCloud, are doing something called normalization, meaning that if you make your mixer master too loud, a lot of that volume is going to be cut off. When this happens, you lose dynamic range in your mix since the top end or the loudest parts of your mix have to be truncated. So what's more important, having a loud mix or a good sounding mix? If you answered a good sounding mix, you're 100% correct. Now in most videos, I typically show you how to do something the right way. Today, I'm going to show you how not to do something. You're going to learn what not to do to your output channel. So here I have a mix that's been bounced out to a single stereo file. Let's take a look at the metering when I play it. As you can see, it's not peaking, which is good. It sounds well mixed and that's good. So what do I need to change here before sending it to a mastering engineer? Honestly, nothing. This mix is done and it's ready to be sent. Here's what a lot of engineers do though. They insert a limiter and pull back on the threshold to increase the overall volume. But you don't need to do this. So long as your track is peaking between negative 18 dB and negative 3 dB on your output, a mastering engineer is going to know what to do with it, how to get it to the right levels, and how to make it sound great. If you make your mix louder than it needs to be, all you're doing is making it more difficult for the mastering engineer to do their job properly. Here is one plugin that you should insert on your output or master fader. Notice it isn't Isotopes Maximizer, it's Isotopes Insight, a plugin that can tell you the LUFS or loudness unit full scale of your mix. Now here's where normalization comes in. Take a look at this. This is directly from Spotify's FAQ. These are targets for mastering engineers. Notice that Spotify not only normalizes your audio, it offers listeners options for how loud they want to hear your music. Look, on the loudest setting, your mix is at negative 11 LUFS. Let's check where this mix is now. With no limiting, the mix has a LUFS of roughly negative 23, which is great. If we take another look at the Spotify FAQ, this is the lowest LUFS on their normalization settings. This means the track could be sent to a mastering engineer where he or she can handle the loudness of the track. As I said before, if you make your track louder than it needs to be, say negative 10 LUFS, your mastering engineer is going to need to turn it down and then work from there in order to have it ready for distribution to Spotify or other platforms. This will limit the dynamics of your track and you'll end up with a worse final product. So I know you want to hear your mixes loud now, that's totally understandable, but it's best to be patient. If you want to hear how loud it would sound, then yes, you can use a limiter to make it as loud as you want, but know that this isn't what you should be sending your mastering engineer. Again, peaks between negative 18 dB to negative 3 dB on your output is great. This ensures your noise floor is covered. Even better is a LUFS of negative 23. This way, your mastering engineer has what he or she needs to make your song sound amazing. So what do you think? How do you prepare your mixes for mastering? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and share it with your friends. Lastly, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com and we'll send you a free mastered sample of that mix.